This is one of a series of short videos produced by the IASP for the Global Year Against Musculoskeletal Pain, which is designed to inform and help people living with chronic pain. The International Association for the Study of Pain has focused the Global Year Against Pain on Musculoskeletal Pain. Musculoskeletal pain is the most common pain problem and one of the most expensive areas for societies. Muscle skeletal pain can arise from muscles, ligaments, joints and bones, but sometimes we do not know the cause. Muscle skeletal pain can be localized, but it can also spread over time and become widespread. If muscle skeletal pain persists for a longer period of time, the pain may become worse and may spread to other areas. This is because the pain system changes its behavior and becomes much more sensitive. To diagnose and understand muscle skeletal pain better, we need to be able to measure pain. Pain is defined by the International Association for the Study of Pain as an unpleasant sensory and emotional experience associated with actual or potential tissue damage or described in terms of such damage. Based on this definition, we can measure subjective scores of the pain intensity. Pain location can be evaluated by drawings on anatomical maps and other dimensions, for example, pain quality and pain unpleasantness can be assessed on questionnaires. It is important to make pain measurable in order to follow changes over time, evaluate effect of treatment on the different pain components and to diagnose which pain mechanisms are involved. As a pain researcher, we had the dream that we one day will be able to measure all aspects and involved mechanisms of pain. This will most likely never be possible but we have over the years developed many new tools which can help us to understand which mechanisms are involved in the generation of muscle skeletal pain. One important feature for muscle skeletal pain is the pain sensitivity of the tissue. Clinically, palpation is often used and gives valuable information of the site of soreness, but more quantitative measures are needed. One example is pressure ergometry. Here, the pressure is applied to, for example, the muscle, and the patient indicates when the pressure becomes painful. This is the pain threshold measured in, for example, kilograms. Patients with muscle skeletal pain normally have smaller or larger areas where they are sensitive to pressure. There are four reasons why we want to measure muscle skeletal pain quantitatively. For basic experiments in healthy volunteers to study pain mechanisms, for diagnostic purposes to evaluate which muscle skeletal structures are pain sensitive, for quality assurance to see if a given pain management strategy works on important pain mechanisms, and to evaluate if new drugs are working on important mechanisms involved in muscle skeletal pain. An important feature of the pain system is the ability of pain to summate or integrate over time. A painful stimulus applied several times is more painful than the same stimulus applied only once. If a pressure intensity related to the pain threshold is applied repeatedly, the pain will become stronger and stronger and this pain amplification can be measured. Patients with muscle skeletal pain often have a very strong amplification of pain when stimuli are repeated over time. Although we know a lot about which mechanisms are involved in chronic musculoskeletal pain and the pain amplification, no new drugs have so far reached the market. Often non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs are efficient, but they should not be used on a daily basis due to the possible serious side effects. The many new tools to measure musculoskeletal pain will in the future help to identify compounds which are particularly efficient on this type of pain. Promising compounds are in the pipelines and I hope some of them will make it to the market for the benefit of the many patients suffering from chronic muscle skeletal pain. An important feature in patients with chronic muscle skeletal pain is that pain is often referred to other areas away from the actual location of pain. The size of the referred pain area is expanded and the distribution is abnormal in patients as a result of how much the pain system is reorganized. Referred pain can be measured by provoking pain from the muscle by injecting, for example, a small amount of salt water into the muscle. By advanced pain assessment tools, we have the option to further improve our understanding of musculoskeletal pain. 
develop better drugs, and hopefully provide the basis for helping the many millions of people suffering daily from chronic musculoskeletal pain.